Hello, this is Colin, and on today's tea I'm trying another new, well, new to me tea, uh, non-such. Now, non-such sounds a bit like a nonsense word, but um, it's actually an old English word meaning unparalleled. So, in Surrey, there is a school called non-such, which is built on what used to be non-such palace, which was the palace, uh, one of the palaces of King Henry VIII, so it would have been the, the unparalleled palace. So, of course, you can imagine that some young British gentleman went to non-such school in Surrey, eventually grew up, went out into the empire to establish themselves, and thus we have non-such estates in southern India. Now, one of the interesting things about collecting tea is that you can actually buy tea from these estates. I mean, you know exactly where these teas come from because they have a name and you can find them on the internet. Um, they're, they're, the non-such tea estates has a website where you can look up you know, their products and, and also their financial statements. And there's photographs, of course, and... One of the things about growing tea is that it's often done in breathtakingly beautiful places because some of the best tea is made in mountains and, and, and just these misty mountainsides covered in, in bright green tea plants. It's quite beautiful. Anyway, so from what I've been able to glean off the internet, the uh, non-such tea estates actually started out as five tea estates with the very... Um, not Indian names of the Nonsuch Estate, the Upper Droog Estate, which I assume was run by people from Clockwork Orange, <laughs> Avaco Estate, Ibex Lodge Estate, and Ripple Vale Estate. Sometime around 1863 or so, uh, they were unified into the Nonsuch Estates in 1924. Uh, it, it, they are grown in the Tamil Nadu area of the Nilgiri Mountains. Uh, Nilgiri translates as Blue Mountains. And uh, they presently, they, most of the, the tea, the, Nilgiri, the uh, non such tea, is grown by small farmers. Um, not that they're short, it's just that. They have something like one hectare of land on average, and then they sell it to a central processor that processes the tea and sells most of it overseas because, of course, the finest um, non-such and Nilgiri teas are too expensive for the locals to drink. Um, so, having said all that, I have for the first time made up some non-such tea, and as you can see, it's quite a dark tea, and just from looking at it, I, I, I the grounds were rather broken and 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 quite they look quite uh, tight. Uh, I expected something uh, a little heavy, a little malty, but drinking it, it's actually quite nice. It's uh, brisk. It's uh, not overly. It's not like incredibly malty. You know. They say it's got floral. Um, in it, you know, I mean, just a hint of floral in it. Can't really detect that myself, but um, yeah, it's it's actually a very nice tea. Not as strong as I expected, um, and not bitter. And um, yes, yeah. so here we are. Uh, I suggest you check out the website so you can see where your tea comes from. Uh, well, this one in particular came from Granville Island teas, but. Um, Cheers to everyone in the Blue Mountains of Southern India. Cheers.